Greetings, nerds. This is Sana Nerd. I'm your host, Sarah Belmont. And with me, as always, is our Mr. Producer, Will Paul. How are you doing tonight, Will? Doing very well, Sarah. How are you doing this evening? I'm doing all right. I'm a bit tired, but I'm good. That's good. That's good. Yeah, I'm yeah, I know. Thanks for indulging me. I was watching uh, some of the uh, public affairs <laughs> this evening, so I knew we were getting started a little bit later. But uh, yeah, but uh, yeah, so far it's been a good week. Hope, hopefully it has been for you as well. Yeah. Um. So there's never when we have this piece of new, this type of news items to like, to like figure out a good way to segue into it. So I'm just going to. Um, start off with it, but unfortunately, um, James Earl Jones has passed, and um, Darth Vader is dead. I know that's clearly his most iconic uh, role for sure, but uh, you know, James Earl Jones just—I mean, he's just a just an icon. I mean, and and this, you know, not only for 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 his voice, but also just the talent. I mean, we look, you know, I was looking at I was looking at his filmography, and um, you know, of course, you know, everybody obviously Darth Vader and, and Musafa from you know Lion King but you know my favorite actually my, I think my favorite one of the characters he's played was uh, uh King Joffy <laughs> coming <laughs> to America <laughs> uh wow. my son works I mean <laughs> yeah. yeah but uh but yeah but even like I mean he's such a career I mean even thinking back to Dr. Strangelove I mean I remember watching that great white hope where he played a character based off of the old boxer jack jack johnson uh fill the dreams the, the whole monologue of baseball i mean the voice of cnn for years so yeah i mean we're you know it's it, it definitely um you know definitely is one of those one of those moments that uh you know it, it's inevitable it comes for all of us but uh whenever we lose such an iconic person like him it, it definitely definitely hurts yeah yes it does um meanwhile marvel has hired shang chi and hires shang chi and the upcoming mcu tv show wonder man director destin daniel cretton to direct spider-man 4 starring tom holland yeah that was a uh, news so of course i guess spider-man 4 has been i guess in development for a bit i guess tom holland i think had some meetings, I guess, earlier this year, last year. I mean, it seems like it's been a while. Um, but uh, yeah, Daniel, uh, Destin Daniel Creighton was uh, uh, was tabbed to direct the upcoming film. Of course, you know, John Watts moved on to do uh, Skeleton Crew for Star Wars and some other things. So um, yeah, it was. This is um, you know, I guess. I guess Shang Chi too will probably <laughs> not happen for some time now. But also, I guess he was also originally was going to, I think, direct the um, Kang Dynasty film, <laughs> if I recall. Yep. Uh, before before all all of the stuff went down with that. But uh, but yeah, I guess he's he's now going to be doing uh, doing Spider Man four, and of course, I think the I think the Wonder Man show uh, with. Uh, uh, Oh gosh, his name. The guy, actor Yasu Mateen. Um he played uh, he was in he was in the watch in Watchmen and several other things. Uh, is 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 in, in Wonder Man. But um yeah, so that's going to uh that's another project he's doing for Marvel. So um maybe we'll see see Miller show up in uh, in Spider Man. Maybe we'll get that maybe it won't be a, a Shang Chi too, but maybe we'll get a little uh appearance of, of the character there. Of Which Wonder one? Man. Of, of, of Shang-Chi and Spider-Man. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Maybe. That yeah. would be weird, but yeah. Maybe. Well, well it, 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 there is precedent in the comics. I, mean, uh, they, I have kinda, no doubt that there's yeah. precedent in the, comment. yeah. <laughs> yeah. the comics. I, I understand that. Yeah. Um, what else? And then, so last night there were some, there was the Creative Arts Emmys Awards. Um, the primetime Emmys are on Sunday, September 15th on ABC. Um, and yeah, the the people who I expected to get stuff got stuff. Quite a few. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. 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 So, yeah. <laughs> so, so this was just to give folks the time frame because I know there's always that confusion given, I guess, the, the Emmys have gotten delayed due to the writer's strike and other things. Um, I think, and 
and also just a way that the calendar falls with the the awards period so these are shows that air between june of 2023 and may of 2024 so that's why you know so so even though the bear season three just finished airing uh the awards that were just given to uh john barenthal and then uh, jamie lee curtis were for season two and in particular they were uh, both one guest actor and actress for the episode uh fishes uh for, in in season two of the bear and of course and it won some other you know won seven uh awards total in the in the creative arts which is these are all the below the line uh awards that uh were being that were recognized and uh and the thing is i did not know this but i was also just reading about the uh creative arts emmys um they're actually going to be airing. So I guess the primetime Emmys are going to be, of course, airing this upcoming Sunday. But then all of these other creative, the creative art Emmys, uh, the two nights that happen uh, over this past weekend, uh, they're going to be breaking those up over the course of the next, I think, few weeks uh, on Hulu and other places. So if you if you don't want to know who won in a lot of the below the line categories, you know, don't read any, uh, don't, don't go to the, uh, the cat TV television Academy's website or read any articles about it. Cause you'll get spoiled. But, uh, I mean, obviously the, the big, the big winner, um, uh, over the weekend was of course Shogun. Um, and you know, one, you know, it also had a, uh, I guess Nestor Carbonell who played, um, uh, Rodriguez, uh one for guest actor for that show and um it won best it won um i guess they had a they have a category for title design and it won for that one um which i, I never knew there was actually uh i mean a, a a category of title design for uh uh in the in the emmys but i guess there is and and that, that show's title did win and it was you know it was very 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 amazing uh obviously very you know game of thrones house of dragon inspired uh you know, start to that show as well but as far as the, the visuals and that kind of stuff but uh yeah it, it won a bunch and then also mr and Ms. smith another show that we talked about uh this year uh, won a couple of awards uh, in, in actually in the stunt category and uh and then michaela cole uh won a, a, a guest actress uh award for the uh, episode infidelity so so that's just some of the some of the ones out there and there's there's many more but i just wanted to flag some of those for 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 our listeners tonight yeah yeah and and you already brought up game of thrones house of the dragon and apparently george R. R. martin has some comments about um the changes that have been made to house of the dragon yeah yeah so uh he's he's been pretty active on his blog here in the last week so <laughs> Last week he um, he had posted on his uh, blog that um, he you know he praised at first he was like he praised the first two episodes of the season, but then he goes into it and starts um, but he, but he he had a big problem with the story the blood and cheese storyline um, and he and so you know there there were some differences in the blood and cheese what we saw on, on screen versus what was in the books and you know what, and how the whole whole issue played out so he uh yeah so he he definitely and, and he deleted the blog post because of course hbo's lawyers basically are like you know take the shit down <laughs> um right. and uh so he deleted the blog post and hbo you know didn't uh uh post themselves is to say um you know you know explaining how ryan condal and the showrunners had who's a showrunner had to make some difficult choices it's a story and that kind of thing so yeah it was, you know so george you know did go into you know if you never read the books there were some spoiler things that he talked about with uh, the uh, helena and aegon's other son uh, maylor that uh how the things played out with blood and cheese and also um it spoils some things too that will happen in the third season. So I'm not going to get into that because neither one of us have read the books. Um, and I don't want to spoil anything for non book readers uh, who, who listen to our podcast because we, we all want to experience this together. So, mm -hmm. so, uh, but yeah, he has, he has some, he has some concerns about what was on the outline for season three and four. 
and the differences that were made. And then today he like posted another blog entry uh, saying that the reason why uh, the the books, uh, I guess the sequel to Fire and Blood, uh, Blood and Fire and uh, Winds of Winter, which I think have been delayed for years. Uh, the reason why he said that he hasn't gotten around to those books, even in, even posted on the blog lately, is because he's just been tied up with, you know, all, all the stuff with the TV shows. Because, of course, House of the Dragon, we've got the uh, uh, the, uh, the, the other uh, season, series coming up next year as well. So, um, yeah, so George has been pretty active lately about uh, his pleasure and displeasure of, of, of things that uh, HBO and the creative team on the TV side, I've been doing to his show, to his IP. Yeah, yeah, it sounds like it. Well, I'm, he certainly is getting enough money to have shared pleasure and displeasure about it all, so. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, and so that just brings us to the next two episodes of Supercell. Um, start off with episode three, Sabrina. Sabrina and Charlene unwind after work, planning a night out. Meanwhile, a brawl among the Tower Boys leaves Taser. Vowing payback, concurrently, Michael devises a scheme. Okay, so I have to say, out of all of the IMDb descriptions I have read over the last several months, that has got to be one of the driest ones. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Maybe because not too long ago I was reading the descriptions for the boys episodes. <laughs> there was yeah. some there was some sass to it, but that's just like <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, especially given that to me the third episode was very I this is where things really started to come together as far as the story. And I felt like we were getting some momentum after the first two episodes of setup. Yeah. Yeah, just yeah. continue on that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, because when an episode does start, we do get, um, you know, we 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 pick up where we had the the cliffhanger in the second episode with uh, Taser and uh, Crazy facing off there at the uh, and um, you know, and then so the the whole the whole sequence as far as like Taser, you know, I guess realized that Taser's crew had stolen some of his of the, crazies gangs drugs mm -hmm. and so you know thing you know so they're they're having the back and forth there's a lot of insults being traded back and forth and and um and the thing is too it's like it seems that we didn't notice at the time but i guess you know, as our heroes soon be heroes um start to you know they're still learning their power and so some, you know, they've been, a lot of them have been having difficulty where it seemed that Taser had gained control of his power. He couldn't during that moment. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, so it, with all that going on, uh, Taser, you know, takes down one of uh, Crazy's uh, lieutenants, and then um, you know everything. Everybody's all excited, and, and then you know, Crazy like ends up you know pulling out pulls out a gun and, and shoots Tiny in the back, and mm -hmm. um, and then of course we. You know, transition to back to Dion. Um, with you know, as we wonder what 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 Tiny's fate is uh, after getting shot. Right, right, and that's the scene where we learn about how, which was mentioned in previous episode about Taser's mom's disappearance, um, and we learn from Grandma that um, she said her her daughter said something along the lines of people doing things that human people shouldn't be doing mm -hmm. um and so obviously she's um from she, now she's the, is she the one who died in the opening sequence yeah in the i first think so episode? okay yeah, yeah that's yeah. what it that's what it seems like i just wanted to verify that i was connecting that dot um which, which you're right. I mean, arguably, I would say that about both of these episodes mm -hmm. is that they, they've they done a really good job with in a quick period of time of making these virtual strangers, making that, that the, the circle close in kind of and the connections yeah. get made. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's not... It's not happenstance or it doesn't feel too convenient by the end of the fourth episode that you have pretty much everybody in the same room. 
Mm -hmm. um, at the same time because of the events that are occurring and the connections. I mean, we find out in one of these episodes that Taser is an ex-boyfriend. Uh, no, not Taser. Crazy is an ex-boyfriend right. of Charlene, who's mm -hmm. Charlene is Sabrina's sister. So, so like having that, and then there's a great scene where you have Andre on one side, um, talking to his friend and you have Michael on the other talking to his friend. Um, and like it, I felt watching these two episodes that I can appreciate the, the speed at which mm -hmm. the plot is moving um, and, and it's, they aren't, they aren't taking too many shortcuts with no. getting these people into place. Um, and it, and it's, it, it's still a very short season. So, yeah. so I'm like, I'm like, okay, so what we saw in the future, that won't happen until the end of season two, right? <laughs> <laughs> At least. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. I don't know. Um, so, yeah, it, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, well, it, at season two at the at the earliest, and then also, um, um, you know, what, with with all the things that are going on, and you know, they, and I think Spud uh, Rod's friend bring brought up the whole in, in, in one of these episodes about the whole butterfly effect. Um, yeah. Whatever yeah. they were, where they were sitting there in a cafe, and and you know, you begin to like, you know. Uh, that's what that's what I like about this show is that they start pulling in like all these other like tropes from other science fiction and, and superhero shows and, and and make it and and trying to make it their own and put their own spin on it. Um, and so, you know, so we did see that and, and we wonder, like, you know, because even Michael even says, look, I tried to go back to the future, you know, back, you know, go to hmm. a few months from now to like, you know, see what, um, you know, see what's going on so you can learn more about what happened, you know. Yeah. With, with the events and stuff and he can't so um can i just point out the first time that he went to the future it was because of sex mm -hmm. so why doesn't he just have sex again well you know <laughs> you know he uh he and dion had a had a moment in this episode uh in the third episode where he you know was she, where whenever she was starting like you said all the dots are starting to get uh, connected here and then michael like you know basically like tells her to drop it very in, in a very like aggressive way like you know just leave it alone leave it alone i agree with right. you and and which you know call you know but because of him not being fully you know transparent with her about what's going on you know we're, we the guilt or or whatever they're starting to build up some walls in their relationship because of that it's and, and it's a it's a secret that he's yeah. trying to prevent her from figuring out yeah. Um. So all the all they did was instead of a secret and identity, they they made it her potential future death being mm -hmm. a secret, and that causes the drama, the melodrama in the romance. So yeah, and the yeah, they, just, they just pivoted. Yeah. Um. I do I do find it funny in these two episodes, like how last we were saying, oh man, no secret identities. Man, they've made that very clear to me because everyone has a friend. Yep. <laughs> everyone has a friend, at yep. least one friend who's in on it and who yep. has their opinions about it. Um, and there's always varying degrees. I mean, you have basically Andre's friend who's like, hey, so I, I see what you got going on here. Let, let's use it to steal some money. And I'm just, yep. <laughs> I'm just yep. like, what? Spud. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Rod and Spud. Spud's like coming up with all these, you know, scheming. It's like, hey, let's, you know, they, I guess they've come up with like, you know, a way that they can make their their drug dealing more lucrative uh, with Rod's abilities now. Um, you know, obviously the same with the Tower Boys with Taser. And then See, you know, and, I, I, yeah. I thought the I thought the opposite with Rodney's friend, because at least at one point. Rod Rodney to me seems very frivolous with his powers and mm -hmm. what he can do with them. And at one point, his friend is just like, "Dude, yeah. I think you shouldn't be like abusing these things. Yeah. Like, you yeah. can actually help people." So, and then he he was the one who even encouraged Rodney to finally have a sit down with Michael and to hear him out. Like, yeah. Yeah. so so I don't. 
that's at least what I saw happen. Yeah, I saw that too. But uh, yeah, or maybe maybe it's just Rod. Yeah, I think you're right. I mean, maybe I'm just I'm overstating uh, Spud's involvement with that. I think Rod has figured out how he can make more money from it. But yeah. Spud, yeah, yeah. Rodney Spud. is very selfish. Like yeah. I'm gonna pull it out there. I said from the beginning, I did not like Rodney. He he kind of furthered my case. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't do himself any favor. So I was like, okay. yeah. yeah. But yeah. But another another connection that they've all you know with between Michael and uh Sabrina and Andre this episode, these two episodes, is they they bring the sickle cell um back to the forefront and with the with the connective tissue with all of these um with all these characters. And you know, and again it's sort of you know, and especially when we see the uh, Taser's mom, whenever doing the, you know, drawing out the blood uh, there during the autopsy uh, in the in the lab. Um, you know, it, it's it's whoever the secret organization is behind, you know, keeping these kids and, and these people uh, locked up. Um, you know, clearly, you know, we 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 do see the common thread of all these families having uh, someone. Whether it's Andre's father or, or uh, I guess Sabrina's, I guess was it Sabrina's father also who had sickle cell. Um, mm-hmm. what, yeah, you know, whenever Everybody she realized, has pretty much a parent who has had it. Yeah, yeah, yep. yeah, it's yeah. Like so about everybody. Yeah, yeah, and I, and I like the way too, like you know, in in universe, uh, Andre and his son AJ, you know, even had the conversation, you know, just to educate the the viewers who may not who may not understand. Uh, that this is a real thing um and and you know whenever either you know aj was asking about is this is something that everybody gets and you know they you know say well you know people yes everyone can get it but it's you know it's primarily something that impacts you know black people and african you know and people of Af- african descent so i really like that that moment too because again it just you know really as we talked about last week really highlight some a, a real issue but you know, they they weave it into the story in a way that um, doesn't beat you over the head with it. You know, but and they make it a part of the plot. But um, and 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 so, but also it helps to sort of contextualize uh, things for for the viewer and, and and then also just how this sort of how 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 something in the real world uh, is is driving a plot point forward in this in this uh, superhero world that these characters live in. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, what else do we find out? Yeah, uh, I guess Sabrina's reaction to whenever she got the powers, uh, when you know, as far as, and uh, her, I guess her reaction, uh, you know, it's very interesting how everyone has approached this these things oh, because like, was, huh? well she killed someone but even like in the hospital you know she was always you know because you know how they set her up in the first couple episode in the first episode or two how you know she's very competent and in her job very driven very focused um and then you know whatever she uh you know whatever she has the incident with the with the uh, bad guy who also had powers you know how it just really impacted her yeah. um yeah and yeah, you know and, and making mistakes at the hospital and that stuff yeah well yeah yeah she's a control freak type a personality yeah. she encounters something she can't control um yeah. and because she can't control it that leads to unintended consequences like killing someone yeah. and that freaks her out completely legitimate <laughs> <laughs> completely legitimate not surprised by her reaction to her powers <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean i was trying to think of anything else really in this episode three i know i think we covered all the major points in episode three um i mean other than, like you said I mean, we did learn yeah we did learn that crazy and um uh charlene sabrina's sister did have a relationship yeah. in the past and um yeah uh, yeah i think those, those were i think we yeah i don't i don't yeah, I think those were all the main points for episode three. And of course, Rodney has a super healing. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. Yeah. Flash. yeah. 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 
Okay, I'm uh, not reading IMDb descriptions anymore. No, not. <laughs> well, yeah. So good. Yeah, turn it episode four, Andre. Yeah, you know, it's the IMDb, and also just the Netflix description too, because the bailiffs pay him a visit. So, and I guess this is just a a British English and American English like, um, you know, issue here. Where I guess bailiff. So when I saw bailiffs. I was thinking like you know I was thinking in the context of like sheriff, bailiff, you know the courthouse or whatever. But I guess in and I guess in British English or whatever. And uh, it, I guess or at least South London bailiffs means debt collectors. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Which which was funny to me. Like not funny, but kind of like. I kind of raised in my eyebrow at that whole plot point just because mm -hmm. in previous episodes he clearly got money. Mm -hmm. And so his first instinct was just to spend it rather than to pay off debt. Like yeah. that, like there's somewhat, and then the, I mean, don't forget the first time we see Andre, it's about his ex collecting child support from him. So yeah. I just, I just didn't. That didn't track with me all all too too much about about the logic of that. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, th there's just some decisions that Andre makes where I'm just like, but that doesn't seem to be the character that was set up in these scenes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like there's something just off about about the way they have decided to approach his character where there's some inconsistencies where I'm just like, this this really isn't making sense. I mean, well, this episode is called On... I mean, it makes sense, but it also is just kind of like, I uh, don't... That seems like he's either a good guy who got fucked over yeah. and is trying to, like recover from that or yeah. he's somebody who got fucked over and then isn't helping himself <laughs> like, i think it's a little i think it's i think quite honestly it's a little bit of both that's it's how i how i sort of see him at this point um because especially when you know whenever we get in, the, in episode four which is titled andre uh, when he goes to the job interview and, you know, and he, he, I mean, within that window, we, we, we see what the, the two things you just talked about. One On the one hand, usually he just like, he knows he's got this back, you know, he's got this conviction in his past. He just like goes to these jobs, doesn't disclose it. And then, um, you know, just sort of hope he just skates along and just hopes he just hopes that just, it, it just doesn't ever come up. And of course it eventually does. So this time, but then in this episode, he's like, okay, let me just try to be forthright about it and see and and just put it out there. Still didn't get the job, but at least he's trying to do the right thing. And you know, as I was watching that, I couldn't help but think about some of the you know that some you know some initiatives that that are going on here here in the states, and maybe also I don't know if they have the same thing in the UK, but uh, where they do you know where a lot of jobs, especially if um, the job doesn't really require a person to, you know, have a criminal background check or whatever is, you know, do, remove, removing the check the box for, for some of the low lying, you know, you know, petty things that people have done so mm -hmm. they can have a second chance. So I thought that was a very interesting. So, I, so for me, when I was watching that scene, I, I was, I was, you know, I couldn't help. I had, I was kind of watching it through that lens and it was just like, Oh yeah, this is this is just what those second chance, you know, you know, remove the box initiatives really get at. It's less like, you know, here's a guy who really is trying to get his life together, get it straight, but because he he can't get ahead because of a mistake that he made back in the past. Right, right. So he yeah. he decides to continue a life yeah. of crime. Yeah, well, and that's the, and I think that's what I think. Yeah, well, I think that's instead. I mean, I think that's the point that they were trying to show show here. It's just like you know, he's done. He's he, he's trying to play by the rules and everything, but at the end of the day, you know, society or whatever continues to like keep him from getting past that. So he's like, okay, well, I just you know, I've got to resort back to what I know. Right, right, and and it's because yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. 
Yeah, so I mean, so yeah, so you know, so he and his buddy like decided to do that. Um, and then, but also just his whole, you know, and also I think with his whole relationship with AJ, because again, he's trying to do the right thing. And you know, and I, I, that was the other thing too. I don't know if it was in this episode or prior, or one, or maybe it was episode two, or was it three, where he like confronted the drug, the brags on the street. Maybe it was in the third episode. That, yeah. Where he confronts those guys and like, look, leave my son, leave my son alone and stuff. And then of course, you know, he lets AJ down, and then, um, you know, big brags and stuff. Um, he's like, hey, yeah, we'll give you a ride. And and, and and so it's just sort of like the cycle repeating itself, um, where, you know, the the brags crew gets the bag of drugs and stuff. And I was just as I was watching the episode and maybe it'll happen in episode five or six. I was like, the police are gonna pull around here any minute before AJ is gonna get arrested <laughs> because being at the wrong place at the wrong time. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. They they are foreshadowing something along that lines. Yeah. Along that line. Along that line? Yeah. 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 And then yeah. And then of course uh, I know we, yeah, another other thing too with the whole crazy taser tiny storyline there, um, you know, t- crazy and uh, I know I think yeah, I think I remember crazy talking to taser about being his brother and being his I guess his mentor in crime, <laughs> but uh, taser's like no, nah, I don't want to have any of that, especially after what was done to tiny and so, uh, so you know we had their confrontation in the park, um. But then Sabrina, um, and again, like you said, Sabrina, you know, to, to what your point earlier, how she's a control freak and and wanted to try to control the situation about what happened at the club, and and then you know, it, it was you know, not you know, bigger things are going on because of course we've been seeing all these surveillance cameras like all th- omnipresent throughout these throughout the throughout the show, so. Clearly, the bad guys clean things up because they don't want their their program to be discovered. Right, right, right. They send out their secret agents who also yeah. have, have yeah. powers and all of yeah. that. Yeah. Um, which which we find out Rodney also gets encountered with them. Michael saves him. Michael, mm-hmm. for these two episodes, are just trying to get everybody together. And ironically, when everyone kind of collides that crazy stash house at the end of episode four, he's the one person who's not there <laughs> yep. um, because his his mom has an attack um, yeah. um, with her her illness and um, he he had to leave. Um, but he he they they definitely. Um, I like how everyone took a moment to do the superhero pose and flash their eyes. Yeah. Like classic. Um, and, and so, yeah. 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 And then, and then also again, just, you know, Dion still doing her detective work and, and as far as her being a social worker, um, and, you know, and, of course, and again, they bring back Jasmine um from the very first episode and we see we see jasmine in, in the lab there in the cells as well uh where the uh, uh jailer the people scientists or whoever they are uh take her i guess they're going to be doing more experiments on her or something uh that seems to be an implication but um but yeah but we we see um Dion, you know meeting up with jasmine's mother and um um and the whole thing of you know the, you know, the phone call that she says she's okay and she'll come back when she's normal and of course you know that there was another line in the in the show i can't remember who said it but i think they were that was another connection uh that was made um again pulling all these people to get you know all all these various stories together maybe it was taser's grandmother um with the whole with uh with taser's mom saying things she'll, she'll come back when she's normal i think I, I, I can't. I think that was the connection. No, that was that was uh, Jasmine's. Yeah. Okay. I thought there was another connection with another one with another character though, but maybe not. Maybe I'm making that up. Another connection. Well, uh, that 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 Dion learns that Jasmine's okay and will come back when she's normal. I I wanted. I thought that whenever Dion met with Taser's 
yeah, grandmother. That. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, about the people with like who are not normal. Yeah. Like do n- unnormal things. Yeah, yeah. 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 That was yeah. in the third episode. Jasmine stuff happened in the fourth episode. Right. Right. Okay. Yeah. 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 So so I think we we talked about everything that happened. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's like yeah, you're, you, you yeah, as as we said before, um yeah, the, the, these two episodes really accelerated the the plot and and uh, we uh yeah, we ended with uh, Taser uh went a gun at uh at Andre and then we'll pick up from there. Yeah. Yeah, we we will um, next week talk about the last two episodes of this season. And on that note, Will, why don't you tell our listeners where they can find you? Yes, you can find me on X, formerly on its Twitter, at Will M. Polk, W-I-L-L-M-P-O-L-K. And you can follow me there, too, at SJBM on S-J-B-L-M-O-T. Please follow our crew on Twitter at Scene and Nerd. Friend us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, and threads at Scene underscore N underscore Nerd. And visit our website, www.sceneandnerdpodcast.com. But most importantly, rate, follow, and comment on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcasts. Good night, geek out. You're welcome. <laughs>